Everybody, Mr. Bucko, back with problems 4, 7, 9, and 10 from your Algebra Chapter 8 practice test. Kind of hopping around here to do these problems. So number 4, we are going to rewrite 3 to the third power times 6 to the negative fourth as a fraction in simplest form. So if we're going to write this as a fraction in simplest form, we need to take a look at the 6 to the negative fourth. 6 to the negative 4th can be rewritten as 1 over 6 to the 4th, where this whole idea of a fraction is going to come into play. Because if I want to rewrite 6 to the negative 4th with a positive exponent, I make it a fraction and put 6 to the 4th in the denominator, because 6 to the negative 4th is the same thing as 1 over 6 to the positive 4th. And then 3 to the 3rd can just stay as 3 to the 3rd, because 3 to the 3rd can be evaluated. I know what 3 to the 3rd is. 3 to the 3rd is 27. And then 6 to the 4th is 1,296. So 6 to the negative 4th is 1 over 1,296. When I multiply these two things together, I get 27 over 1,296. And this fraction can be reduced because 27 goes into the numerator and the denominator. I did that just by checking with the calculator. And I get 1 over 48. So this fraction in simplest form is 1 over 48. Number 7, we're going to simplify the answer with positive exponents. So we have 4x to the third times y over 8x y to the fourth. That whole thing to the third power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every single base in the fraction and put that to the third power. So I'm going to do 4 to the third power. I'm going to do x to the third to the third power y to the third power in the numerator, 8 to the third power, x to the third power, and y to the fourth to the third power. So we have a lot of powers of powers property going on here. And when I do that, this is what I get. When I do that 4 to the third, I get 4 to the third. When I do x to the third to the third, I get x to the ninth because I multiply these two together because it's a power to another power. y to the third is y to the third. 8 to the third is 8 to the third x to the third is x to the third, and y to the fourth to the third is y to the twelfth power. So now that I have this expression simplified by evaluating this whole expression on the inside to the third power, giving me this, I can now simplify a little bit because I have exponents I can evaluate. I have the same base in the numerator and denominator, so I can use the quotient to powers property there and also here. So by evaluating this, I get 64. 64 comes from 4 to the 3rd. This x to the 6th comes from x to the 9th over x to the 3rd. It's kind of like these three x's cancel out 3 in the numerator, leaving us with x to the 6th in the numerator. 9 minus 3 is 6. And why do I put the x to the 6th in the numerator? Because there are more x's in the numerator than there are the denominator. And the opposite is true for the y's. Now we have y to the 3rd over y to the 12th. That's y to the negative 9th. But there are really more y's in the denominator. So because there's 12 in the denominator, 3 in the numerator. So I have y to the 9th in the denominator. If I was to evaluate this straight out, y to the 3rd over y to the 12th, I get y to the negative 9th. But I don't want a negative exponent, so I move that to the denominator of the fraction, which is why the 9 is positive here. Then I have 64 over 512. That can be reduced because 64 goes into both 64 and 512. So we get 1 eighth. 64 over 512, five, excuse me, 64 over 512 is 1 eighth. So I have 1 x to the 6th, or just x to the 6th, over 8 y to the 9th. And that is simplified with all positive exponents. Number 9, we're going to write this with as, or as a single power. So I have 2s to the 8th squared. So once again, I have everything inside the parentheses to the second power. So I'm going to have 2 to the second power and s to the 8th to the second power. So what this is going to look like is 2 squared, s to the 16th. The 2 squared comes from 2 to the second power. s to the 16th comes from s to the 8th squared. And since I have a power to a power, I'm going to multiply these two things together to get a 16. I know 2 squared, that's 4. And s to the 16th is just s to the 16th. And this is our answer. And number 10, a to the 5th times b to the 5th. 
times a to the fifth times b to the third. Once again, this might look a little complicated because we have parentheses, but all this really says is this. We're just multiplying all these things together. What's in the parentheses or what's here is exactly the same thing as this. We're just multiplying all these things together and the fact that they're paired up in different sets of parentheses really doesn't matter. All we're doing is multiplying. And when we multiply things that have the same base, we add their exponents. So I have a to the fifth and then I have an a to the fifth. If I'm multiplying these two things together, I'm going to add their exponents. So a to the fifth times a to the fifth is going to be a to the tenth. And then b to the fifth times b to the third is b to the eighth. And then we can't add the 10 and the 8 together because their two bases are different. So this is our answer.